Already, so this is lesson nine of the Zero to Hero Power Saga. Uh, we are pretty excited today to bring Christine. Christine, I was waiting for this moment to ask you to please, <laughs> please teach me how to pronounce your last name. Because <laughs> I, I tried it before and I knew it and I tried it by myself. So I knew I was wrong. <laughs> so I was, I was referring, uh, refrain from saying it wrong. So you can't, you can oh, okay. teach us all. <laughs> okay, right. So my surname is pronounced Kolodziejski. Kolodziejski. Did I get yeah, it right? That's good. Perfect. Yes, okay. That's so good. we have <laughs> superhero Christine here with us. If you don't know Christine or if you haven't seen any of her videos or blog posts, I don't know where you've been hiding because <laughs> it's all over the web. And uh, to me, it's a reference of what, a, what an app. Not only a Canvas app, but a, what a website should look like. So she's kindly made herself available to teach us some tips and tricks uh, today and on Thursday. And we are so delighted that you did so. Thank you so much, Christine. No, thank you so much for having me here. I mean, uh, a couple of years ago, I was watching From Zero to Hero. So to be on the other side, I guess, and my camera has just gone off for some reason. Am I still there? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. to be to be on the other side of, of the From Zero to Hero is amazing. So thank you so much for having me on the show. And I hope I can keep you excited enough today. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you so much. And guys, please grab a seat, maybe grab some water. I prepare to be amazed. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Victor. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Okay, so I'm just going to share just going to share my slides. And of course, as always, I'm going to ask if you can see my slides, just like we all do when we share something in Teams, even though we know that you're going to be able to see them anyway. Uh, so just let me know when you can uh, see the slides and let me just go to window and then from zero to hero. OK, and I'll just pop that in presentation mode. I'll just swap these across. So I'll uh, swap and I'll just put your faces on the top of my screen so I can actually see you as well. Um, wherever my Teams has gone. OK, perfect. Right here. Right. Can everyone see my screen? If someone could just nod off, that would be uh, that would be perfect, please. Perfect. Right, CEO. OK, so uh, for um, today's session, we well, for this week, I guess, for the two sessions that we have, I'm going to split this into two kind of parts. So the first part today is going to be a uh, relatively easy one. We'll focus more on kind of design and uh, how things work and we'll be working on the Canvas app. And for the second part, we'll go into slightly more kind of technical, difficult things, uh, but um, I promise you, I'm going to make it as easy to understand as possible. And I do have some homework as well for you. So um, I hope you're free tomorrow because you've got some homework to do to share off uh, on Thursday. So um, for some reason, I can't see your faces still. So I'm just going to move that over here. Perfect. And now that's Awesome. OK, so uh, for anyone that doesn't know me, my name is Christine Kolodziejski. Like I said, uh, Victor pronounced my name really well. Um, I am based in London in the UK, so I'm based in England. Um, now, I hope you can understand my accent because sometimes I talk a bit fast and I forget that my audience can be quite varied. So at any point, if I'm speaking too fast, just tell me to slow down. Uh, just unmute yourself and shout at me, please, because I do have the tendency to just get excited and talk and talk and talk uh, without realizing that uh, some people are actually trying to listen. Um, I work, I've just started a new role at a company called EY and I'm working there as senior manager. I am also a Microsoft MVP for business applications and I'm a massive gamer, a drama and a nerd. So if any of you game at all, um, Shout me out. I'd love to play online with you, but I can promise you that you will lose. <laughs> so um, let's have a look, first of all, at what UI design actually is. And the way I'm going to do the sessions is, like I said, today is going to be focusing more on design and using low code and out of the box features to make your applications look nice. And then for the second part, we will go into more kind of code stuff, but I'm going to keep it high level and easy enough to understand. Now, both sessions will be very hands on because I am a uh, believer that if you want to prove something or show how something works, the best idea is to show you actually hands-on uh, how, how things work. 
So in terms of what UI design is, as you can see in there, uh, UI design is effectively designing visual interfaces for machines and software. So UI is literally everywhere. Everything you use has some kind of UI. So Microsoft Teams has its own UI. Any website that you go to has its own UI. A mobile application has its own UI. So user interfaces are pretty much anywhere. Now, when you ask a professional designer what they do for a living or what UI design is to them, chances are they will just say it's moving rectangles for a living because chances are if you're doing anything to do with design, 99% of shapes that you're moving around are actual rectangles. And this is what people think when you think of a designer that's working from home. So um, this is exactly what, uh, what it is. Now, when it comes, and I'm not sure why that repeats this slide. Uh, for some reason, my animation is there now. Um, when it comes to UI, design, we have four kind of core principles that we generally follow. Now, the co four core principles are, are related to what you can actually see on the screen right now, the emoji. It's not there by accident, by the way. Can anyone guess what those four principles might be? Now, try and be politically correct, but you can use any word in a chat. So I'll give everyone a second to guess what those four uh, design principles might be. Now, no Googling, please. No cheating. <laughs> Give everyone a second. <clears throat> okay, come on, post it in the chat. I'm waiting. What do you think those design principles might be? <laughs> Object must be nice and prettier. <laughs> What do you think? So the four core principles, the first letter of each one of them, uh, form a word that's related to the emoji that you can see on the screen. Accessible colors, navigation. Okay, perfect. Any more? Kiss, keep it simple, something. <laughs> that's actually a good one. It's not this one specifically, but that's a really good, uh, good word, uh, Mary. So when it comes to UI design principles, and I always use this emoji because it's the most kind of uh, memorable, I guess, there are four design principles that form part. So the first one is contrast. The second one is repetition. The third one is alignment. And the fourth one is proximity. Now, as you can see, they form a nice politically correct word, which is crap. Now, what we are going to do is uh, rather than me talking you through what each one of these uh, mean in kind of very low detail, we will actually do them while we are working on the application. But just to give you a bit of background of what each one of them actually stands for, so when it comes to contrast, contrast can be anything. So normally when we think of contrast, we think of a difference between a, a two colors as an example. So let's say black and white or, or blue and purple, any kind of colors. Now in design, that can be colors as well. But what more than that could be is uh, typography. So as an example, fonts, let's say you have a welcome screen for your end user. If you say welcome, as an example, the letter welcome, uh, the sorry, word welcome, is written in a light uh, font and then uh, let's say Christine, so my username is written in um, black font or, or heavy font or uh, heavy weight, whatever, bold, I've forgotten the words now. Um, we are creating the contrast between the two words. Um, the reason why you want to create contrast is to emphasize is to, emphasize to a user um, that you want to kind of spotlight the attention to a specific element. In terms of repetition, now repetition is relatively easy in Power Apps because it uh, kind of applies mostly to containers and galleries and all of that to make sure that uh, items are aligned with each other properly in a gallery that they look in the same format. So if you look at a list of products, as an example, you have the price in the same place, you have the photo of a model of something in the same place and all of that. So um, that's what we mean by repetition. And again, we'll go over that when we go to the application. Then we have alignment. Now, alignment is the one key thing that can really make or break application. Now, when it comes to alignment, we have things like working with the eight pixel a uh, grid rule as an example where everything needs to be multiplied by eight. Uh, keeping white space as well is really important. It's actually better to have more white space than less white space. Um, and really making sure that the elements that you want to be associated with each other and you want to uh, look aligned are uh, aligned to some kind of grid and we'll go over that don't worry um at all and then lastly we have proximity now proximity is what we call a guest told principle and that comes also from user experience so the idea between proximity is that 
elements that belong together or are associated with each other are grouped near together. So when you think about it, if there's uh, three people standing in a street, let's say you put two of them together and let's let's assume they are friends and you put two of the people together and the other person is standing on the other side of the street, you will automatically assume that they are not together in any way. So they are not related, they are not friends. Whereas if you put three of them together, you automatically assume that they are a friends group or, uh, you know, mates or work colleagues or something like that. Now, the next thing that we need to look at as well is UX design, because this is something that's usually confused with UI design. Now, when it comes to UX design or when it comes to UI design, we said that the uh, purpose of UI design is to design and create user interfaces for software and machines. Now, user experience is effectively planning how that looks and works to make the machine or software memorable and enjoyable for your end users. So to make sure that the uh, application or a machine, piece of software delivers what you ask the user to deliver. And we'll go over the principles in a second. Now, when it comes to UX principles, we have seven core UX principles that are really important. They are relatively easy to apply, but they are really important from the very first kind of planning stage. So most of the time, uh, different courses will tell you that there's four, there's seven, there's 10, there's 20. These are the kind of seven that I have learned along the way that I've uh, learned from the UX designers that I have been learning from for, for a while. So the first one is useful. What we mean by that is when you're building a website. So let's just assume you're building a standard website, a, a power page, uh, or just an application like a mobile application or a Canvas app. It has to ha be useful and has to have a purpose. So if you're building something for a customer, it needs to deliver value. It needs to be useful in every single possible way, because if it's not useful, users are instantly not going to want to use it in any way. The next one is usable. So your application needs to be usable. And what we mean by that, it needs to be, uh, you need to be able to open it. It needs to have all of the workflows. You need to make sure that you don't have any errors. You don't have any inefficient formulas and all of that to make sure that the application can actually be used by your end users. The next one is credible. Now, what we mean by credible is that your application has a, a good reputation. So what we effectively mean by that is how many times have you told your end user as a developer that uh, power apps are just slow? They just load the way they are, uh, or power apps can be inefficient, or power apps can take so long to save data. Now, a lot of the times it's actually our own fault that the application takes so long to, let's say, save data because we are saving it to 20 different um, data sources or we are saving it inefficiently. So what we mean by that is just imagine a situation where you worked for a company and an application or piece of software that you needed to use to, let's say, input timesheets kept crashing all the time or uh, it kept logging you out or it kept to throwing errors and stuff. Instantly, when you think about that application and the next time you have to use it, you think, oh my God, it's not really usable at all. I really don't trust that it will work. So I'm going to put aside an hour so I can like get over it and do the things. And this is what users will do when, uh, let's say, they use an application that you've built and it ends up being really slow. The next one, oops, um, that was too quick of a thank you. I don't know why that's just put me back to the very beginning of my slides. There we go. Uh, the next one is memorable. So when you build an application, and this is really important for pre-sales. So if you're working with a customer and having your first conversation with a customer, as an example, it's really important that you make an impression of your uh, customers and users. And there's multiple ways we can do that. Uh, the first and the kind of key thing that you can do when you're building an application for a customer for the first time, let's say that could be a demo or a proof of concept, is by applying the corporate guidelines. So uh, what I tend to do when I'm building applications is I will always speak to the customer and then I'll go to the website and I'll check all of the colors that they have on the website, all of the logos, animations, tags, all of that, and try and replicate it in an application. And the reason why we do that is because there's an emotional connection that you create between your uh, customer and an user and the application. So if you're demoing an application that you've built like a demo for your customer and you've already used their corporate branding at that point, it's showing to them that you care and instantly they associate that application as their own. So you're more likely to sell that application to your end users as if you were to just use some random corporate branding as an example.
The next one is Learnable. Now, the easiest way to imagine what Good UX is when it comes to Learnable is just think the last time you downloaded an application from the App Store, uh, let's say some new application, if you were able to navigate through the application and do everything you needed to do uh, with that application without having to use the help button or reading user guides, that means that the UX was good enough for you to be able to learn it really quickly. And one of the things that I'm usually very opposed to when it comes specifically to low code applications is the idea that they have to have a 10 page user guide. Now, if your application has to have a 10 page user guide, how to do something, chances are that maybe you need fixing or adjusting to make sure that uh, it's learnable and it's easy enough for your end users to understand exactly what they are using. The next one, and this is really important from both UI and UX perspective, is accessible. Now, what we mean by accessible is that the application has good color contrast. So you have good color contrast between text and background. It's accessible by screen readers. So you have good screen uh, naming conventions. You have good control naming conventions. You have appropriate focus borders, tab index, uh, tool tips, and all of that includes in your application. Now, in the UK, where we are based, it is actually a legal requirement for applications to be accessible to people. So it's really important, not just from the UX perspective, but also from the legal perspective to make sure that your application is accessible to, to your end users. And then lastly, desirable. So if your application has a cool animation on startup, if your application looks nice, feels nice, it has your profile picture on the top, it feels personable, Instantly, users are going to think, wow, this is so amazing. I really want to use this application all the time. I love it. And that's how you're going to increase your user adoption really quickly. Now, before we navigate to actually doing things hands on, are there any questions at all? I'm just going to quickly have a look in the chat. Um, let me just see any questions at all. I can't see any questions. Anyone, any questions, thoughts at all before we navigate? Okay, perfect. Right. So now I'm going to start, stop sharing this slide and I'm going to share the actual application that we'll be working on today. Uh, so it is an application that I have built specifically for uh, today because uh, I wanted to make sure that it's something that uh, no one has seen uh, before. And I'm just going to move your faces again because they've disappeared. So for today's application, I have a very simple application and the application itself is effectively what I call find a villa. So the idea is, I don't know about you, I love holidays in every shape or form. I love hot weather. I'm going to Israel where I'm going to meet Victor in a couple of weeks and I truly can't wait, uh, obviously to meet Victor, but also to get a little bit of sunshine because I'm tired of the uh, never ending cold weather uh, in the UK right now. So and I can see, uh, Jess, you're, you're nodding your head. I think it's it's been freezing over here uh, recently, so I cannot wait to get a little bit of, of sunshine. So the idea is very simple. As you can see, I followed the kind of usual patterns that I see in Power Apps. So normally I see people see, uh, let me just quickly make this slightly smaller and them in here. So normally what I see in Power Apps very frequently, and even when you create an application from a SharePoint list, you will always have this kind of header on the top of your screen. You'll have some icons there, the name of the screen. Then we have a simple drop down. The, the purpose of the drop down is to filter through the gallery here. So I can just choose um, any of the items in the gallery and that will uh, filter through what we have uh, in here. So I can just choose, let's say, Los Angeles. I can choose Miami and that will uh, filter through the, uh, through the results for us. And Again, the gallery is what we get out of the box. So you can see we have the separate here, the arrow, the prices, standard text, nothing kind of exciting here. And then the second screen uh, is the kind of property details screen. So again, the very simple, nothing too exciting here, but this is what we kind of, again, see traditionally in Power Apps. So we just have a photo of, of the uh, actual um, Someone's just said, you can't see my screen. Uh, sorry, I've just seen the chat. Can you actually see my screen? Or am I talking to myself? <laughs> I've just seen the chat. Okay, perfect. Right. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you. Oh God, that scared me then. <laughs> so the, the next thing, as you can see, is a very simple screen. So we have the product details. We have the uh, header on top again with the icon, some text, price, and a very standard button. So just going back to the original screen, this is what we have in here, and this is what we're going to make it. So as you can see, I haven't added any code in here, no shadows, no gradients, and I'm dying inside when I don't use them, but very simple out-of-the-box features. And you can see that we are manipulating colors and the way we lay out things to make them look a lot more appealing to your end users. 
And then this is the property details kind of screen before. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn it into this. So again, we're keeping it very simple, but just nice enough to your end users so uh, that they feel, you know, that the application looks more modern than what we get out of the box with Power Apps. And I have to be politically correct when I say what we get out of the box with Power Apps, because I, I, I can be quite politically incorrect sometimes when I say what Power Apps look like sometimes. So, um. What we're going to do then is I'm going to duplicate the screen and we will start doing things hands on. So I'm just going to wait for that to uh, load. Perfect. Right here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, transform the screen that you can see uh, on here. So the first thing I always do when I see these kind of applications is remove the banner on the top. Now, we don't ever need to see that banner on the top unless you have something specific and useful on there. There's no reason to add the name of your screen or anything like that. Your actual screen should speak for itself. So uh, you want to make sure that if you're, let's say, have a product detail screen or an annual leave request screen, it's clear enough what you're looking at. You don't necessarily need to add the name of the screen um, on there because it just takes up space. So it makes your uh, screen a lot more cramped. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take out and transform this gallery. So as you can see, we have a very basic gallery in here. So the first thing I'm going to do, and I always do this with a gallery, and let me just quickly zoom this in a little bit more so you can actually see what we've got in here. So the first thing I'm, I always do with these galleries is remove the arrow. I hate that arrow. That's like my biggest pet peeve in this gallery. And the next one is the separator. Again, I really don't see the point in that separator being there at all. So I'm taking it out. OK, and just like that, to me personally, that gallery looks a lot more cleaner because, you know, we don't have that separator and the arrow that's just kind of, I guess, cramming the screen in, in itself. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to transform the way this looks and then we'll focus on alignment itself. So the first thing that we want to do here is probably take out this from here. I don't see the reason why we need the description in here when we already have the description of the actual villa in here. So because we're looking at the kind of high level overview of what that villa is and we are mostly attracted by the picture itself, the emphasis should be placed. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. So the um when we look at this product detail, and in general, when you go to shopping websites, the first thing that you look at is the product picture. You don't care about what it's made of, uh, how many people it fits, um, the price. Oh, the price is obviously important to, to a lot of uh, a lot of uh, applications, but the focus will be on the product itself. So we want to make sure that this picture here is big enough to grab our attention. So I'm going to remove the description from here just to clean up our screen a little bit more. And then we're going to move the picture over here. Oops, whatever that was. There we go. Uh, we're going to move the picture over here. And I'll just move that. Uh, let's just say, uh, let's just make the actual text slightly smaller. And now we're going to make the gallery uh, template uh, a lot bigger. So I'm just going to extend this to, let's say, probably around here. Let me just zoom out a bit. So what we want to do is because we'll have a navigation menu on the bottom, we'll probably expand that to around here and then we'll place the actual navigation menu in here. OK, so the next thing that we want to do, like I said, we want to emphasize the actual picture. So we will make it a lot bigger. I'll just move that here and we will change the image position to fill so that it obviously fills the um, the entire image in here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this slightly smaller so I can actually see uh, what's happening. And actually, I have just thought I'm doing this the wrong way because we need a horizontal gallery, not a vertical one. So I will probably just wrap these items here and just put the wrap count to, I think there's five, I think. I'm just going to do it this way. But um, actually, that's just going to break the whole thing. Let's just go back again and I just add a horizontal gallery instead. So I'm just going to pop that in here. So we'll just do horizontal gallery. OK, and what we're going to do is we're going to replace the uh, picture from uh, here with the, let me just quickly go into here. I forgot the name of the gallery. There we go. We'll pop that onto here. And like I said before, we'll uh, take up the description from here. We'll ignore that for the time being. I'll just remove that as well. And we will make the picture bigger again. We'll make this fill the entire screen. Now, what we want to do in here is there's a couple of things that we have wrong. So first of all, um, the um, 
alignment and the white space from the left hand side is too small. So there's not enough space in here. Now, one of the things that I see very commonly, and it's a, a, a big thing, is one, when you use a mobile application in general, you're already losing a little bit of screen estate on your mobile because obviously every iPhone has like bezels around the edges. So you're instantly losing a couple of millimeters. And if you place text right on the corners, you're going to lose a little bit of text legibility there. Now, the second thing is from the kind of UI perspective, when things touch the edge, it makes it look like you run out of space because it feels like you've crammed something there um, that should probably have a little bit of space. Now, normally when it comes to UI design, like I said before, we work with what we call an eight pixel grid and I'll go over that uh, very briefly. But the idea is that we can just add a rectangle. So like I said before, we will just add a simple rectangle. Unfortunately, we don't have the ability. Let me just pop that outside of the gallery. Uh, we don't have the ability to be able to switch on the grid systems like we can as an example in design tools like Figma. And what we're going to do is I'm going to make this rectangle, let's say, uh, red to some extent, and we will make it transparent. So I'll just make it, let's say, 25% transparent. Actually, we'll just make it a little bit more opaque. There we go. So the idea is that this should be the width of um, a number that's multiplied by eight. So for this one as an example, let's just say we'll make it, um, I don't know, 56 will probably be a little bit too little. Let's just see. Um, actually, I think that might do. I think that should be fine. So the idea is that both the spaces from the left and the right hand side will have 56. Now, with the image itself on the right hand side here, we don't have to worry about that because that image will be going off screen anyway. But anything that we placed on the top here, any pictures, any photos, this should end right here on the outside line. So any content just right here, like the navigation menu, should end right here. We shouldn't have anything that's going outside of that to create that nice uh, alignment. And you'll see that in practice in a second. So the next thing that I'm going to do is we're going to add a little bit of border radius and we'll probably make this, I don't know, 50, just to make it a bit more round. And I am just going to make the gallery template slightly bigger. There we go. And the image slightly smaller. And we'll move that to the edge there. And I'll probably, um, make the gallery template slightly smaller. There we go to bring that close to the edge. Now the idea is, as you can see here, that the image will be touching right the gallery here. And again, I'm just going to eyeball that for uh, for now. And this automatically creates the space between our corners there and it doesn't feel like we've crammed too much in there. Now, the next thing that we will do is we will turn off the navigation. Now, one of the things that you could do is obviously turn off the scroll bar and show the navigation step, which will obviously show here. You can't see that because we have the rectangle right now. Now, what I would probably say is that you don't necessarily need to do that for a mobile phone. Now, the reason why is because when you scroll in the mobile phone, you are doing this with a um, with a finger. So when you have an application and you can see that there's something else there, you will just use your finger to navigate across. You won't necessarily press on a navigation step. You will just swipe your finger and that item, uh, whatever item you have in there will already be there. So what I will actually do, let me just quickly move back to the uh, end. We will turn off the navigation step because it's not adding any value to our screen at all. So I'll just turn it off. Okay, now we are nearly halfway through the screen and I'm not sure why my screen has just gone really dark. Um, let me just quickly, whatever I've just done here with my screen. There we go. Okay, perfect. I don't know if that went dark for you, but it did for me. So the next thing that we'll do is we'll add a button. So if we just quickly look on the original screen here, if we go to properties after, you will see that we have the button here and the button here. And then we have a little bit of text on the top, which we'll add in a moment. So going back to the screen here, we will add the button there. So I'm just going to say button and we'll give it a second to add and there we go. Now the idea is again when it comes to width of everything is that everything will be a multiply of eight. So we will just say for the width we'll just say that will be 240 maybe. Okay and we will make it slightly taller so we'll probably make it 80. Perfect. Um, maybe we could make it even uh, larger. Let's just say 88 as an example. Then we will add some border radius. Now with border radius, ideally you don't want border radius uh, in that button. So within the kind of image container, uh, as I would call it, 
You don't want them to be identical because it creates a really clumsy interface. So ideally, this border radius um, should be larger than the border radius of everything inside. So for this one, we'll just say, let's say that will be, um, let's just say 35 as an example. That's even too much. Maybe let's just say half of that will probably uh, 25. There we go. The next thing that we'll do is we'll just add a uh, button. And I think I called that button um, the Villa. We'll do that. Give it a second. Again, I'm not sure why Power Apps are so slow today. And we will just turn the color of that to white, the text color to black. OK, and now the text. Now for the font size and generally colors, the way you'd want to do it is you'd want to declare that in the app on start. Uh, but for today, I'm just going to manually change um, all of them um, as well. So I'm just going to change this to uh, Lato. Now, my favorite font to use in Power Apps is Lato. I, uh, the reason why is because it has the most um, typefaces. So we have Lato Light, we have Lato Black, traditional Lato and Lato Hairline. Lato Hairline, I wouldn't recommend using just because it's very, very thin and the legibility isn't great but for all th other three um, they are the perfect uh, kind of combination because when we look at other fonts that we have in here there isn't really that much choice when you look at them so we have like um, Georgia as an example Arial and Sigo UI but there isn't as much kind of I guess difference between them as we have between these three different type um, typefaces so I'm just going to make this latte black and just see I don't know why I'm getting this please wait pop up all the time power apps is not playing in the same game as me today and the next thing that we'll do is I'll just quickly pop another button within here there we go and we will make this button around instead so again the same principle applies multiply of eight uh, which will make it 88 by 80 eight there we go and to make this perfectly round i'll just make this 90 and within here we had a heart icon so for the purpose of the demo we are just going to use an out of the box icon now in part two so on thursday we will be diving into svgs step by step and svgs can be quite scary when you talk about them but i will try and explain them as easy as i can uh, to only um, give the kind of useful stuff to you so i'm just going to type in heart and we'll pop that over here Pop that onto here. I'll just quickly zoom in. And this is way too big. So traditionally in kind of modern interfaces, we'll probably make this around this big. So it's not too big that it feels like there's not enough white spaces around. Just going to click away of that, go into here, go into here. And just like that, we have that gallery ready to some extent. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add the text on the top where we had the uh, find the perfect villa, I think it said. We'll just go into uh properties after so we have find the perfect villa and my profile image should be there but my internet is kind of slow today um which is why it's not there yet so i will what i will do is we will not be using the drop down today either i will show you a hack how you can uh replace your drop down with something a lot more usable in general so i'm just going to take this out and i'll just quickly copy um uh, take that out. OK, and what we're going to do in here is we will add the text. Now, one of the things that I was going to do is I was going to use containers, but I have seen the episodes with Leo that's on, I think, on the call, I think I've seen, and he's already on containers. So I had to like last minute remove them from my presentation because I was like, oh, it's already covered. I really don't want to kind of bore you with the same uh, with the same thing. So thank you so much, Leo, as well, because that gave me more time to do other things as well. Um, and your session was awesome, by the way. So what we will do is I'm just going to quickly put some text in here. And again, normally we just use containers to align this perfectly, but I'm just going to kind of hand uh, drag them into here. So we will just say find the perfect villa as an example. Now I will want the perfect villa to be on the top on the bottom there and we'll move that on the top. Now, as you can see, because we have the rectangle here, it's perfectly aligning that to the line here. And the idea is that the text will start perfectly on the line here to make it really nice aligned. Now, when we add a label to our screen, by default, it will automatically have some padding uh, applied to it. So I'm just going to remove the padding from all four edges here. Let me just take that out. And there we go. Now we have that perfect straight line to the left hand side. So I'm just going to change the text to black again and we'll probably make it uh, 40 as an example. Uh, is that a little bit too big? No, that should be fine. We'll do that as 40. We'll move this a little bit off the top because again, don't forget that on mobile phones, especially on an iPhone, we have the kind of um, top 
bezel island whatever they call it now apple keeps changing the name but we have those kind of things on the top so you need to make sure that there's no text there so it doesn't look like as uh, something is overlaying on top or you're missing any kind of important information and then i'm just going to add another label and that said i think your perfect home is waiting so i'm just going to add that in here your perfect home is waiting okay i'll just move that to the bottom and we'll make this a lot smaller so this is where we will apply the contrast rule so the find the perfect villa is the kind of primary text that we want to spotlight to our end user so the second text underneath is kind of supplementary text but it's not as important so i'm going to make it let's say 20 pixels an example that looks about fine and we're going to make the font a lot lighter as well so i'll probably make this lateral light i think that looks fine i'll probably actually let's just quickly remove this space between here i think that's going to be better perfect and just like that we have the screen nearly ready the navigation menu is what we will be doing at the next session because that will be uh, with svgs and then the next thing like i said is the hack with replacing the drop downs now with drop downs in general uh what you want to avoid is when a drop down has let's say one or two options so if you have let's say fewer than three or four options it is a good idea to show to your end users all of the available options so you want to let's say if you have a project status as an example and you have started in progress complete as an example you want to make sure that you show all of these three options to your end users so they can just choose from let's say a radio button a uh like a list box or whatever so rather than hiding them in a drop down which again if you're using a mobile phone or your laptop as an example you're increasing the number of clicks and you want to make sure that those clicks are as minimal as possible because the more clicks you expect your user to make to be able to perform an action the more tiring it becomes and some people actually suffer uh with let's say uh muscular dystrophy as an example or any kind of impairments that could impact their mobility which will then cause them discomfort when they have to click on 100 things as an example so to replace a drop down the easiest hack is by using a gallery and it's really simple so i am just going to pop a horizontal gallery onto here horizontal and we'll just use the blank gallery onto here and for the gallery items, I'm just going to use a hard code and array of items. So in here, let's just say, well, I think we, rather than actual state, I think we had a recent popular and bestseller. We did indeed. So what I'm going to do in here, let me just open the gallery again. I'm just put um, recent bestseller. I can't remember what the other ones were. Uh, bestseller and popular, popular and best seller and just like that we have a, a blank gallery in here i am going to switch off the navigation because that will not be necessary for us at all and then what we can do is we can start adding things so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to add a simple button to our gallery so i'm just going to pop that in here and i will change the uh template width in here change the button size to let's say around here bless you jess um, bless you. <laughs> and what we are going to do next is we want to make sure that again, just like we did before with the text, we want to make sure that this does not exceed the line behind that and equally on the right hand side as well that we follow the rectangle that we have in here. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is I'm just going to make this slightly smaller because we don't need them to be that big and we'll make them slightly less tall. And again, I'm just eyeballing this because I don't want us to uh, run out of time. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to just write, add some text onto them. So we're going to go into our button text and I'm going to type this item and then value. And just like that, we have the text there already. So we have a uh, drop down replaced with, with a gallery. And let's fix the small touches in here now. So I'm just going to change the color of that to match a kind of branding, which we'll do in a second. And we'll change the text as well. So first of all, let's do the text and we'll probably do Lato Light and we'll make this, let's say um, 16 as an example. Okay, that looks about fine. Um, now for the border radius, we want them to look like a pill, so we'll make them uh, 45, okay. And we could probably extend the space between these slightly. So I'm just going to move this to the left-hand side edge there. And I'm just going to expand the gallery width slightly further there. Okay, 
I think that should be just about perfect. And the next thing we're going to just change the colors. So I do have colors saved in the branding guidelines screen in here, just so I don't have to remember what they were. So I'm just going to use this color in here for the actual uh, buttons. And what I'm going to do, actually, if I just quickly go to the branding screen, let me just get the RGBA value instead. And um, we'll do 246, 246, 248. Okay, um, let's go to wherever that's gone there we go so we'll do fill of that and we will say fill 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 there we go and we'll do if this item is selected we want this to be uh black and if it isn't we want that to be rgba 246 246 248 i think it was and then one Close that off and then we'll just change the text color as well. So for the text, I'll just copy this color and we'll just swap these around. So I'm just going to take this out, color black. There we go. And then just like that. And just like that, we now have an option set in here. So I'm just going to remove the border as well because it's kind of throwing us off a little bit. And I will probably make this slightly taller just because it doesn't look quite right in there and perhaps slightly wider as well. OK, that's a bit better. And just like that, um, did someone just say we can't hear you? Uh, we can't in the chat. So I just say in the chat, I was like, no, why am I talking to myself again? <laughs> so just like that, as you can see, and this gallery works exactly the same like a drop down wood. So if I was just quickly pop, let's say, an, um, a label onto here. So let's say you're patching this to, I don't know, a SharePoint list or database. I can just go to here and we'll go for gallery six. And this will just be gallery six dot uh, selected dot when that's typing. My browser is frozen. There we go. Gallery selected. Oops. Can't type. There we go. So as you can see, as I select these, we have these values in there. So if you're using, let's say, a patch to patch your values and all of that, you can still work with that perfectly, uh, perfectly fine. Again, we could fix the hover color as well. So I'm just going to quickly go to the hover fill and we'll go to here. And for the hover fill, we'll do RGBA 196, 196, 19. Um, we'll probably do 200 just to make it slightly more blue, actually 198. Eight maybe and 0 0.3 and this should make the text and we'll change the hover uh, color as well in a second and then for actually maybe that's a little bit too light let's just make this slightly lighter oops can't type today one maybe okay and then moving on to the hover color as well hover color should be um black Come on, why is this not typing black? black? I don't know why, but for the couple of weeks, I've noticed that when you type black, it doesn't work anymore. You have to type in color black, which is, I think, a new thing because I used to be able to just type in black and it would work. OK, so just like that, as you can see, we have uh, the kind of interaction there. We could, we should probably do a if statement there because if I hover over that, um, actually, that, that doesn't look too bad. Um, so just like that, we have that working in here um, now. Now, before we start doing with the second screen and then wrap up for, uh, for the next session, are there any questions so far at all? I can't see anything in the um, in the comment section at all. OK. Um, can you hear me? Oh, Jesse asked if I could hear you. OK, right. I see that. No, I couldn't. I couldn't hear it. Don't worry. <laughs> Perfect. Right. So that's screen number one. Like I said, the navigation menu will come uh, later on on Thursday. So that's when we'll uh, dive into the actual SVGs. So moving on to screen number two, I'll just go into here and we'll probably wrap this up. Uh, we will probably won't get the time to finish it by eight, uh, the whole screen, but uh, we will continue with that on uh, Thursday anyway, because we have a, lot, a couple of things to add in here and then we'll move on to the uh, menu, navigation menu itself. So the first thing that I'm going to do, and again, Power Apps has done this thing where when I zoom out, I can't see the top. So I'm just going to remove the top from here, take that out and we will start playing. Why is this doing that? Let me just quickly zoom in. Does anyone know a fix for when that happens? As you can see, when I'm zooming into Power Apps, I can't see the very top there. I can never figure that out. Let me just quickly 
Okay, there we go. I can see it now. How bizarre. <laughs> Very bizarre. Right, so, so first of all, we're going to just extend the actual image here. So I'm just going to move that image to the top. Let's just go into uh, here. I think a gallery is restrained. There we go. Move that onto the top here. And then we will move all of the text a little bit further down because we want to expand the image itself. Now, to if I was just quickly go back to our after photo in here, you will see that we have that kind of nice card over effect over the actual image and to achieve that all we have to do is just use a button so i'm just going to go to properties oh sorry this one here and what we're going to do is i'm just going to pop a simple button on my screen i'll just pop that in the gallery and we'll give it a second and actually this is not the screen that we've just moved isn't this one mm, where's the other screen there we go and i will just add a simple button in here Pop that onto here. And now I'm just going to remove the text. We will make this white. Just pop that onto here. And we will just expand this here. Now, initially, you will cover obviously the text just because we have the text in here. Let me just make the gallery slightly bigger. Um, gallery, gallery, gallery. Um, let me just edit the template size. There we go. Oops. This is always so tedious trying to edit the actual gallery there. Perfect. Right, so we will uh, move that to the bottom and I'll probably make this slightly bigger, uh, maybe a little bit further down. We will uh, remove the border that we have in here as well. So take that out and then we will apply the border radius, which will be 45. Actually, I think we did 50 before. And we'll give it a second. OK, now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to move all of the content back to the top. So I'm just going to move this, this, this and this to the top of our screen. OK, apart from the obviously image, because we want that to stay at the back, I'm just going to move that to the front and I will remove the annoying separator as well. So just delete that. OK, and now we are ready to start styling. So we're going to um, go into here and wherever that text has gone, uh, go into here. And let me just move that here. So first of all, we obviously the product name will come on the top. So I'm just going to change that to Lato Black again, our favorite font. And we'll probably make it uh, 40 again. Perfect. OK, now what we want to do is again, like we did on the previous screen, we want to make sure that the space here is the exact space that we had on the first screen. So I'm just going to move to uh, properties before here. Copy that rectangle from here. Go into this one here. And I'll just paste that in here so I, I know that my label needs to uh, end right there. I'm just going to remove the padding from the left again. And we will just make sure that this is perfectly aligned. Now, power ups can be a little bit problematic when you're trying to drag and drop that to the perfect location. Uh, so I'm just going to manually add that in. I think it was 56 and I will go into here 56. Perfect. OK, so we have that. Now the text underneath. Oops, I've broken it again. There we go. The text underneath uh, will be the actually this should have been the I'm just looking at the original image. This should have been the small text instead. So we will just make this Lato and that will be 20. And that could be probably Lato light, actually. Lato light. That's better. Uh, it was the actual if I just quickly to control and C, control and V. It was the name of the actual property that needs to be bigger. So we'll make this 40. Perfect. And this should be this item name. There we go. And I'll probably move this slightly further down. There we go. OK, so now the next thing that we had on the screen there and let me just quickly refresh my um, properties, property details after. Um, the next thing that we have in here is we have, again, just simple uh, buttons on here. Now, these buttons aren't even a gallery. They are just uh, containers that we have in uh, in here. So we have four kind of uh, standard containers uh, in here and then the text. So we will quickly do these uh, text in here before we run out of time and we'll do the SVGs and the rest of the uh, staff on Thursday. Um, so uh, let me just quickly go back to my screen properties. Um, is that the one? Nope. This one here. Yeah, too way too many screens. There we go. OK, so I'm going to remove the swimming pool from here, the bedrooms from here, cinema from here, uh, the price I leave for now. Uh, take that out from here as well. So we will move the description slightly further down. Again, same principle. So we will change the font uh, to Lato Light in here. And we will move this to be perfect on the left hand side here. Again, I will remove the 
the padding from all the edges when that allows me. Okay, perfect. Right, and we'll move it onto here. Do that. Then for, has it just moved off the corners there? Okay, and then let me just quickly pop that onto the left hand side here. There we go. Now, the thing that you don't have to worry about is that the text ends way sooner here because some text obviously will be longer. Some text will have different words. So some of the words will actually expand to the add to the end line here. And then next thing that we'll do is we'll just quickly make the button a lot smaller. So I'll just move that onto here. Move the price over here. And uh, let me just make this slightly smaller. OK, we'll align that perfectly with the text that we have in here. And then uh, all we have to do in here is just change the color to black. There we go. Uh, go to Lato Light. Maybe that's a little bit too light. Go to Lato. Perfect. And then uh, go to Border Radius, I think. Uh, 45. I think we had a pill over there. Let's just give it a second. OK, and now we're going to use a very simple hack to add an icon to your screen. So. Um, if you've never heard of them before, and well, let me just quickly go to the website itself. Um, before we had emojis, we had what's called the Unicode characters. Uh, and these are effectively still icons uh, that were kind of the first generation, I guess you can call them, of, of emojis. Now, the beauty of them is that uh, these Unicode icons, the black and white ones, act like traditional icons, but they fit in a label, which means that you don't have to add an image control. You can just copy them from here and add to your text label. And not only that, they will change color and change size with the actual text. So I'm just going to quickly go into here and we'll get the um, kind of envelope from here. I'm going to click on copy. And we'll navigate back to our power app here and go to my button here. And I'm just going to click on the text and I'm just going to pop that icon with control and V at the beginning there. And as you can see, we now have that icon in there. Now, the beauty of this is that even if I make my text less bold, so if I was just quickly make my text a lighter, you can see that that icon is becoming lighter as well. If I was to make my text uh, larger, as an example, let's just make it 40, you see that that's increasing with size as well. So the beauty of that is that if you're not confident with SVGs and you don't like the out of the box icons, you can quickly extend your icons in the application with just pure text. It doesn't affect your application loading times or anything like that in any way. So I'm just going to pop that back to um, 20. And I think we had one more text label there. I'm just going to change the text, uh, the font to uh, Lato and we'll go into here. And we had one more text here which said asking price. Uh, let's just make that Lato light. We'll make this 20 again. And I will just say this is um, Oops, select asking price. OK, and I'll give it a second. There we go. OK, okay. OK, so again, there's still a few things that we will add in here on Thursday, but um, pretty much that screen is also done, as you can see. So we will add the kind of pills that we had on the top here. And just like that, as you can see, in pretty much, I think we had around 35 minutes um, with me talking. We've done a kind of application makeover very quickly. And you can see that you don't necessarily need to use code or CSS or SVGs to make your application look much better out of the box, which is the features that we get with Power Apps. Now, before we navigate to the exercise itself, are there any questions at all? I'm just going to quickly have a look at the actual comments in there. Um, which is the best way to render images in it? <clears throat> images. Um, Eduardo, for the images, I actually used a relatively low, well, low size images. So I, um, if I was just, you know, zoom in really like a lot, you can see that there's a little bit of blur. Now, the beauty of using kind of slightly lower resolution images on the mobile is that uh, they become way more compressed on the mobile and no one's exactly going to kind of zoom in a hundred times see image. So these images actually way smaller in size than they look. Um, that's that's the beauty of them. Now, there's multiple online converters that allow you to uh, 
resize your image or compress your image and uh, you will be able to download like a fifth of the size of that specific image um, from there as well and I totally recommend that uh, if if you need that. Uh, probably those are loaded as resources in the app. That's also very true Betim, uh, so uh, they, are, they are loaded as actual resources in the application too, um, but the same applies for images that you get from let's say a SharePoint list as an example. Uh, good to talk about the text proportions of the text we could practice about it. Too much big term. Yeah, that's a very good idea. We shall cover that on, on Thursday as well then, Eduardo. So not a problem at all. Any questions at all before I navigate to the uh to the exercise? Any thoughts, any feedback at all? Okay. Right. Okay, now exercise time. So I have an exercise that I did specifically for uh, for uh, this. Now, um, the exercise is a very simple. There's just like a kind of welcome page in here. Um, the first exercise that we have in here, let me just move into here. And uh, you can see that I used quite high resolution images, so they are taking a while to load. The exercise number one is to improve the look and feel of the gallery that you have on the next screen. So the gallery is very simple. It's just iPhones. Uh, majority of us have a mobile phone of some sort sort, whether that's an iPhone or an Android. So the idea is that you will download this and try and transform this application to look as nice as you possibly can. So get as creative as you want, do whatever you want with it. Um, and what we will do is obviously if you get time, because I imagine that everyone is busy, if you get time to do this before Thursday, that would be amazing. So we can all see the results and see how everyone else tackled the specific kind of design issue in here. And then the exercise two is also for this uh, for this uh, session. So the exercise two is similar to what we just had. So improve the look and feel of the product details uh, screen. And the product details screen, as you can see, is very simple, similar to what we've just done with the uh, find a villa screen. And the idea is that you try and make it as beautiful as you possibly can. So the exercise itself, I have uploaded it to my GitHub, and I'm just going to quickly go to uh, GitHub. There we go. And um, let me just quickly wait a second. Come on, Internet. There we go. So I'm just going to go to my GitHub and I'll pop the link in a second. If I just quickly go to repositories from zero to hero. There we go. And let me just pop that in a chat. The application itself is here. So it's saved as a zip file. So I exported it as an app package instead of the MS app file so that it's easier to import. So all you have to do is just download that from here. So I'm just going to click on that, click on download, and this will download the application. We'll give it a second. Whenever that loads again, I'm not sure what's happening with my internet today. There we go. And then all you have to do is go to powerapps.com. So I'm just going to quickly click exit that, leave that, and we'll give it a second. And then leave. And we'll give it a sec. Come on, internet. OK, and then we'll go to apps and all you have to do is literally just go to import uh, app, import canvas app and just import it as an actual zip package rather than the MS app file. So that's there. And also the slide deck from today and Thursday, which are just in one slide deck, uh, are also in this repository just before before anyone asks. If you want to download them, you're more than welcome to. But that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something new uh, from, from today. I hope I, I made it exciting enough to some extent and easy enough, I guess, um, compared to what's coming to you on Thursday. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, Thank it was you. it was a lot of good information. Uh, anybody who wants to give feedback, uh, you can unmute yourself, maybe turn your camera on. Go for it. Um, Thank you for the second, Christine. Amazing content, as always. Oh, thank you, Pranav. Thank you so much, Pranav. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's been really great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. <laughs> oh, that's really good. So I'll put the lesson on YouTube if you want to do it like I will do, which is play <laughs> and pause try <laughs> yeah. and then play again and pause and go back so we'll we'll load the 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 lesson here shortly and uh we'll look forward for the next class on thursday thanks That's again awesome. christine really? thanks everyone uh if you have questions as as you look at the video uh you can either send it to me or send it to christine we'll try our best to yeah. to answer those all right 
Brilliant. Oh, awesome. Thank you. thank you so thank you so much, everyone. And I look forward to seeing the results on Thursday then. <laughs> yeah, don't thank don't you. show up if you don't have your homework done. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Take care, everybody. Perfect. Have a lovely evening and thank day you. wherever you are. Thank, thank you. you so much. Take Bye. care. Bye, Bye now. Bye. Bye.